Moving forward to the 19th century brings us the development of the penny press. It was a revolutionary idea by Benjamin Day of the New York Sun to sell his newspapers for just a penny and pioneer the idea of a mass media. Now, traditional newspapers had cost six cents and were typically delivered by mail. Now, the new penny press cost just one cent and was sold by paper boys in the street, making the news more immediate. Traditional papers were at the time filled with political commentary, poetry, and letters. Now, you're more familiar with the content of a penny press paper as it's what you'll find in a modern newspaper, local news, crime coverage, features, and human interest stories. News in the penny press was also coming from reporters rather than repeating news from documents. The penny press was filled with breaking news rather than old and stale stories. They also didn't have a distinctly political leaning like many previous newspapers. And a final difference between the traditional newspapers of the 18th century and the new penny press of the 19th was that the penny press was funded by street sales and advertising. The penny press singled a new kind of journalism aimed at the interests of the common citizen. Anyone could afford the paper as it only cost a penny. Perhaps an unintended consequence of relying on street sales rather than politics or subscribers was the rise of yellow journalism. Now the term yellow journalism comes from the yellow kid, the first color comic that ran in both the world and New York Journal. A good comparison to yellow journalism is to the tabloid journalism of today. Sensational stories of sin and sex, lavish pictures often faked, Sunday supplements like comics and features, and rumors disguised as news, including one rumor that actually led to the Spanish-American War. Excesses reached a climax as editors William Randolph Hearst of the New York Journal and Joseph Pulitzer from The World battled for supremacy in New York, by then the nation's media center.